We're joined by Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network. The question to Mike Lombardi is, why didn't Bill Belichick have a job? Ian, why didn't Bill Belichick have a job? I, I will say I am frustrated by it a little bit. I mean, he's the greatest coach of all time. I think everyone knows that. The fact that it didn't go well the last several years, to me, is more of a reflection on the quarterback position and the coaching staff around him rather than can Bill Belichick still coach or not. I think if you say, like, all right, give me your two sentences why he does not have a job, I would say it takes so much to hire him. It takes so much to come in and let him have the GM, let him have the personnel department, let him have the coaching staff. It takes so much. That the, and I would say the same thing for... It takes so much because he demands it. Right. Should, shouldn't he yes, be willing to give that up? Shouldn't he be less demanding? So I would say, on one hand, I would say yes. But on the other hand, he is the greatest coach of all time. He knows what it takes in his mind to have the most successful program you could have. Was. So, is. Was. Is. Well, I mean, I just mean he's not active. Do you think he's the best coach in the NFL right now? I think he's the greatest coach who ever lived. Okay, well, that's different. Oh, you mean, so, like, you're talking, like, I get one season with a coach. Yeah. And yeah who do you want right now? Uh, not him. Probably not. Kyle Shanahan, maybe? You know, something like that. Something okay, like that. Okay, McVay. You know, but either way. McVay would be another. Yeah. Do you but, think but he deserves a spot in the league? I really do. But, anyway, it takes so much to hire him, and I think part of the problem is a lot of the people making these decisions would be the same people who'd be elbowed out of the way if Belichick was hired. And that's why, you know, it like for Jim Harbaugh, same thing. It took a building that was cleaned out that was willing to say, you know what, Jim Harbaugh, you bring in – he didn't hire the GM, but certainly he was familiar with him, right? John Spanos is, you know, heavily involved in personnel, but also one of the owners. Like, he's not going anywhere, so there's no threat that Harbaugh's going to elbow him aside. It takes a perfect storm to hire these guys who are all consuming. So – Yes, many teams made a mistake by not hiring Bill Belichick, but I understand why it didn't happen because the people doing the hiring don't want to be shoved in the closet. Do you think he'll be back next year? Ooh, I'm surprised you're hesitating. Uh, well, I, the problem is it's the same thing. Right. I would say... Unless he unless he dials it back. But why would he, though? So here, here, Because so, he wants to coach. Well, he, doesn't, he doesn't have the juice he used to. I'll answer this in two ways. I think there is a... I'd say better than 50% chance he's back next year. There's going to be some teams, Cowboys, Eagles, if they struggle, like people are going to say, well, of course they're going to hire Belichick, right? Here would be the other thing. Let's say he really takes a step back. He hangs out in Nantucket. He steps away. There are some people, and the record is like, like I know some people care about the record. Like, who cares? He's still got all the rings. Who he cares? does. He, he cares. I am not 1,000% convinced of that. Okay. And the reason I say that is because I've had people tell me all the time what Bill Belichick knows and thinks, and I know him, and you guys know him. Not everyone can get in Bill Belichick's head. So there is a possibility he goes, yeah, I just want the rings. But sometimes when you take a step back, you say, you know what? That's really hard, and I kind of don't want to do that. And Nantucket's great, and I like to have a beer by the beach or whatever. Um, so that, I'm not 1,000% sure that he takes his steps away a year and goes, I cannot wait to get back at 4.30 in the morning grinding tape. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's his call. What do you mean? Oh, I, you, yeah, you, mean I think you don't think anyone will hire him? Right. I, think, well, I don't think it's entirely his call. I think he's going to be 72 years old. And as you said, there's a big commitment yeah. in order to make him the head coach. But Bill's if, going to have to give up ground. Right. If he lowers his demands, you think there'll be a place? Sure. Yes, me too. But, he, uh, you know, I don't need personnel. You don't have to pay me at the top of the league. Well, then he better get someone he believes in you to can, run personnel. You can keep your team president. Like all that. He just lowers his demands and drops the bull crap. Uh, he'll have a job. If, I just don't know if he's capable of that. If he goes and demanding everything that he's had here in New England or is demanding with Atlanta, no, you're right. He's probably, who would? I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't give him everything that he wants. He hasn't earned it in the last couple of years at, at this stage. I mean, I just think he's a little delusional, Ian, about what kind of gravitas he still possesses. And I'm not telling you that all the things you said aren't true. He is the greatest coach I've ever seen. There's no two ways about that. He's also 72 right. with now a track record of failing without Tom Brady. He destroyed a quarterback. He left them without talent on offense. And we could talk about the deficiencies being, well, they didn't have a quarterback. And that who picked the quarterback? Who built the roster? 
All roads led to Belichick. It was entirely right. his operation. So why would you give him the power anymore? Sounds I, like we're yelling at you for Belichick. No, 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 I, me. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Believe me, believe me. I, yeah, I've, I've listened to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's your fault. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. I get it. Um, the quarterback did not work out. And so that is his fault. That is Dave Ziegler's fault. That is a lot of the coaching staff's fault. You know, I would say if Josh never leaves – then Mac Jones is probably still the quarterback and Belichick is probably still the coach, right? So I would also say this. On offense, I do think there is talent. And I think if there was a better quarterback, they would have average offensive talent, which is not obviously not what you're looking for. But I think I do not think it's below average. I think if they had a better quarterback, they would be average. Um, I, yes, the quarterback decision ended up bad. But I, everybody screws up the quarterback. They okay. all do it. Now, going forward, who's going to be making these calls? You had some reporting today. What's going on? So, interesting the way the personnel department is constructed, different from the way it's been in the past. Obviously, it's been built on down for decades. Now, it is. Uh, it appears to be Elliot Wolf will be the one who has final say on the 53-man roster. He brought in some of his close colleagues, also very good. Alonzo Highsmith did an excellent job in Green Bay and, all, and Seattle is also absolutely hilarious, but a very, very good personnel mind. Um, they're going to be working with macro. Is going to be more doing college now. Um, you're going to have Pat Stewart, who's going to be involved in both. So, but I think the main thing is it's going to be Elliot Wolf essentially running the show this off season. And you know, he's not a GM. I don't know what his title is going to be, but he's not a GM. But was certainly someone whose credentials would put him in the mix to be a GM somewhere. So. I'm not, like, totally surprised, but it was still some news. Okay. What, uh, what do you make of Gerard Mayo, the transition there, Alex Van Pelt, Ben McAdoo, et cetera? That staff, it feels like, really underwhelming to me, Ian. Yeah. I, I, I like Alex Van Pelt a lot. Um, I don't think it's underwhelming. Now, but you could say Ben McAdoo, like, you know, did take the Giants to the, to the playoffs, which who cares? But, like... As he is perfect for this. He is perfect. He's not the offensive coordinator. He is going to lend his experience as someone who's worked a lot of different quarterbacks, who's been a coordinator, who's been a head coach. Great role for him. I think Alex Van Pelt did a really good job in Cleveland with some really trying quarterback situations. I mean, somebody was helping Joe Flacco get to, to come off his couch and lead the team to the playoffs. Um, why I did, also think that if these guys are so why good, did they let him go? Right? Why did they, why why did they, they let, let him, go? him go? And why didn't they have any real offers elsewhere? If these guys are so great. Why were they on the street? Uh, I would say the situation, the reason that Alex Van Pelt was let go in Cleveland was, was because Kevin essentially Kevin Stefanski was like, I may want to call the plays. I may want to just focus on being more like the CEO coach. If that's the case, I want someone who has called plays before or who he thinks would be a little better at it. So, you know, offensive coordinator, there's running the offense and then there's calling plays. And he made the decision that he wanted more of a play calling option, which is why Ken Dorsey is there. So, yes, fired, essentially. Uh, not hired because, I think, because of the lack of play calling experience. I happen to think he's very good. But underwhelming is, it's fine. Alex Van Pelt is the most low-key offensive coordinator you will find. He is not a media person. Um, he loves football so much. Uh, he is like a big old school tape dude. Like he loves it. Um, but he's also someone who will probably stay for five or ten years. And I like that because Mayo is young, and having a staff that he can build is, I think, a really good thing. Uh, Ian Rappaport joins us from the NFL Network. Handicap what you think they're going to do at number three. My guess right now would be take the best quarterback available. Um, is that the right thing to do? Yes. I. I mean. If you have someone who is – so, like, let's just say for the sake of argument that there are two great quarterbacks at the top of the draft and then the next guy is three. When else are you going to be here? You, you just take him. Like, if you're taking a quarterback at three who you think is, like, ten, just take him. Somebody's going to take him. Who cares? Just take a franchise guy. You hope you hit it right. If you hit it right, you're good for 15 years. They're not all like Tom Brady, but if you get a franchise guy right, you're good forever. You're the Houston Texans. So, to me, like, if you're not going to take one, then it's an acknowledgement that, one, we may be back here, which is not great. And, two, we are not even ready to build properly, which is okay. I just don't think that's what this organization is. Anything else? Um, I do. 
<laughs> yeah, I think you, they're. I don't think they have the talent in offense that you do. But again, I, well, it's so, just an so, opinion, right? And but that that decision is going to be really interesting because let's say they take an offensive tackle. Mm-hmm. You say then you're like, whew, we are building. Like we are in it for, and that's, and I don't know the people build for the long haul anymore, but but that's what that would say. So there's a real message in that pick, is what you're saying. Yeah, Ian, thanks for coming by.